All right, it looks like we do have a quorum of members present, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Kama Dobbs with CMAP. Doug's a little under the weather today, so I'll be taking over the chair role here and calling this meeting to order at 11.01 a.m. Um, just as a reminder um, for those in the room, restrooms are out the door to the left of reception. Um, this meeting is being shared virtually through Zoom for those who couldn't join us today and is being recorded. Uh, therefore, committee members, please remember uh, to turn on your microphone before you speak so that those online can hear. And when making a motion or a second, uh, please state your name. That makes it easier for those on Zoom to follow what's going on. Um, so let's start with um, introductions of the committee. As I said, Kama Dobbs representing CMAP and chairing today. Uh, to my left. Megan Swanson, Illinois Department of Transportation. Tom Rickard from Kane County representing the counties. John Paul Diebla, FHWA. Mark Pitstick, RTA, representing transit agencies. Grant Davis, CDOT. Oh, and I don't have my mic on. <laughs> um, all right. Um, again, welcome, everybody. Uh, first item on our agenda is agenda changes and announcements. Uh, staff does not have any agenda changes. Are there any announcements from any members of the committee? All right, seeing none, next up is approval of minutes. We have before us the draft minutes from our February 15th meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those minutes as presented? Time record uh, motions. And a second. Mark Pitstick seconds. Any discussion or corrections? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? All right, hearing none, the motion carries. Um, next on the agenda is the program monitoring section. Um, Doug says included in your meeting packet as an informational item are the programming status sheets for all three programs. Um, if there's any questions on any of the status sheets, Doug is available online to answer those. Are there any questions on those sheets? All right, uh, hearing none, the next item is the programming summary and obligation goal. Uh, also included in the meeting materials was the CMAC summary and obligation goal report. Uh, not much has changed since the last meeting. Obligations are up about two and a half million for a total of 86 million for the federal fiscal year so far. Um, are there questions for Doug on the programming summary and obligation goal? No, I guess just a note, though. Uh, so we are working through an amendment to add in uh, the FY24 CMAC funding for State Lake. So hopefully by the next meeting, that should be obligated. Fantastic. Or that may have already been transferred. The transfer is in progress. I think the transfer is in progress. Yeah. Yeah, that's already been counted on the, because the transfer already occurred from FHWA to FTA. So that's already counted in the six million. Thought I had some good news then. Sorry. <laughs> it's good that it's moving forward. <laughs> Whether it's in the number already or not, it's still good. Um, any other questions or, or thoughts on that? Um, all right, next up, our project change requests. Uh, John Hodsma is going to give us that item today. Good morning, committee members. My name is John Hodsma. Um, staff received four project change requests, uh, three of which are for CMAC funded projects and one which is for a TAPL funded project. Um, so the first request is for the Al Algonquin Road bike path from Dearborn Court to Elmhurst Road, sponsored by Mount Prospect. Um, the sponsor is requesting a $26,510 transfer from construction to engineering two and a scheduled advancement to shift engineering two from 2025 to 2024 and right away from 2026 to 2025. So uh, just moving the engineering two phase and the right away phase up by a year. Um, the transfer to engineering two is to cover higher uh, costs than anticipated and scheduled advancement allows the project to better meet their target lighting in 2026. Um, staff's recommending approval of the requested transfer from construction to engineering two 
and the schedule advancement of phase two engineering uh, and right away. The second request is for the PACE bus access improvements in Berkeley. Um, the sponsor is requesting a $140,800 transfer from engineering two to construction and a cost increase of $454,400 CMAC for construction in 2024. Um, this project was part of the 24 to 28 program, which means the cost increase policies do apply and the project was eligible um, for up to 100% uh, of its awarded amount. The sponsor is going to be doing uh, design engineering locally, uh, which allows for the transfer they are requesting and the cost increase has been a result of the higher than anticipated construction costs. Um, the project is targeting uh, the September 2024 letting. Um, this project was re-ranked among access to transit projects included in the 2024 to 2028 program and remained the first ranked project out of two total projects in its category. Uh, staff's recommending approval of the requested transfer and cost increase. Um, the next request comes from Metra uh, for, from its zero emissions locomotives project. Um, this project is uh, approved for 50 million dollar CMAC in 2027 uh, for implementation and $119,320,000 CMAC in 2028 for implementation. Um, and the sponsor is requesting a schedule advancement of 29,000, or excuse me, $29,024,137 CMAC from 2027 to 2025. And to accommodate this request, the another project of Metra's, the Alternative Fuel Locomotives Project, uh, would move that same amount, the $29,024,137 from 2025 back to 2027 um, and to cancel uh, costs out. Um, the reason for this advancement is the result of Metro's board approving a contract for the zero emissions train sets on February 21st of last month, and that allows the project to proceed. Um, staff's recommending approval of the requested schedule advancement. And finally, the last request here is for the Orland Park 167th Street from Steeplechase Parkway to 104th Ave project. Um, and the sponsor is requesting a scheduled advancement for right away from 2026 to 2024 um, as the project has completed plats and is ready to submit right away funding agreements. Staff's recommending approval of the requested scheduled advancement of right away from 2026 to 2024. Uh, that concludes the four uh, change requests we receive, and uh, we're happy to answer questions if there are any on any of the projects. Before I ask the committee for questions, I do want to acknowledge that Chris Schmidt from IDOT has arrived and replaced Megan Swanson at the table. So um, are there any questions regarding the cost changes for John? Mark? Uh, just a comment that Metro staff is unable to be here there. Uh, I think Rita Yaman is on the line if we need her. Uh, they explained to me, and I understand what's going on. They're basically moving funds from uh, between two projects. Okay, so Metro's basically moving funds between two projects. They're, if you look at the programming obligation uh, summary, the last three lines show that they have money for zero emission buses, uh, locomotives, and alternative fuel locomotives, and they're just swapping out. So, because one's moving fast faster than the other. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate that clarification. Other comments or questions on the proposed changes? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve this, the changes? Grant Davis, uh, so moved. It second. Sticks, it sticks seconds. All right. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion carries. Thank you, John. Uh, next up is the FY, F, FY26 to 2030 program development methodology discussion, and Doug is with us online to uh, cover this item. Thanks, Kama. Uh, next slide. Uh, so uh, as we get ready for the next call for projects, which uh, is going to open in October 2024, uh, gonna, every meeting I'm going to bring that date up. The uh, opening of the call for projects uh, from January to October, um, and this is a change. Um, well, 
we since I can remember, uh, we've always opened the call in January. Um, so this is uh, we're shifting uh, for the purposes of trying to hit the January, sorry, the June uh, product, uh, policy MPO policy committee meeting for final approval. Um, and there's a couple of reasons we're doing this. The main one is to avoid the change in the federal fiscal year, uh, which kind of puts projects uh, behind a little bit, uh, but uh, uh, will now they will have the ability. The funding will be programmed in the TIP prior to the change of the federal fiscal year. Um, as detailed in your memo, um, staff is not planning to make any changes uh, or to the evaluation measures, uh, the project categories, or anything related to the three programs. Uh, this is unless um, um, would like uh, to have any. Re-examine. Uh, we can definitely do that, um, but if we don't hear anything, uh, staff is going to use the next uh, six months uh, to update data sets uh, for their underlying analysis. Uh, this includes things like the population and employment numbers for the density that's used for the TAP evaluation, uh, or the uh, emissions rates that are used for the CMAC and uh, CRP evaluation. Uh, so with that. Um, I don't have anything else. Um, are there any questions from the committee members? Are there any questions for Doug or um, suggestions for anything that you would like staff to re-examine? Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I don't have any uh, recommendations necessarily. Just asking for a little clarification on the, especially on the carbon reduction program. So uh, we have separate funds that come for the carbon reduction program and we pick separate set of projects for that and the scores are coming out of the same scoring criteria right do we have a i can't remember do we have a separate score for the for that program of carbon yeah. reduction score right so the 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 scoring is the same as used uh by the cmac program uh except for the fact the emissions uh we use greenhouse gas emissions versus uh voc emissions um so the the scoring methodology is the same it's just on uh, side we're using different emissions uh, for uh, the evaluation of the CRP projects right and uh, tend to pick the larger projects but for the carbon reduction program is that then sort of the um well we've only had one round so far um okay. I don't know if I would say that that's gonna uh, keep going forward um when staff was putting together the last program or the recommendation, we tried to find projects that one fit into the like the the general requirement um, because we were kind of behind on those. Um, uh, it already been two years of funding. We're already like um, uh, federally authorized, um, but projects hadn't been selected for those. So we tried to pick projects that we thought could move relatively quickly and getting funds obligated. Uh, so that the the CRP program didn't fall behind uh, from the get go. Okay, thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. Tom, go ahead. Yeah, I was I was not able to attend the STP committee. Were Were there any recommended changes that might impact um, our programs? Yeah. So one of the things that we talked about this morning. Um, was how the bus speed improvement project type in the STP methodology um, over the first three cycles has only received five applications. We didn't fund any of those with STP. All five of them, though, did end up getting funded with CMAC in over those those three cycles. And so, um, you know, we are going to be digging into that project type for STP. Um, that discussion. I would say likely will bleed over into this committee as to whether those are more appropriate to be CMAC funded versus STP funded. Should the concentration be on transit signal priority, um, transit signal, yeah, preemption priority, that's the right word, um, TSP, um, and how that fits in with the signal interconnect project type in CMAC. And so um, I think there was that, and Doug talked a little bit um, at the first meeting about, you know, we with um, inclusive growth and equity being um, high priorities of the agency and the region, 
we'll, we'll always take a look at that that criteria and that affects both programs. So did I miss anything, Doug? No, I think you got them all. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions for Doug? None? All right, thank you, Doug. I'm turning myself off instead of on. Um, next up on the agenda, um, again, a short meeting is other business. Do any committee members have other business they want to bring up today? All right, seeing none, uh, moving on to public comment. Does anyone in the audience wish to give public comments? Terry's shaking her head that she's received no cards. Um, anyone online, if you're online and would like to make a public comment, please use the raise hand function or type us a note in the chat box. I'm not seeing anything. Um, if you're still furiously typing and did wanna make a comment, go ahead and just self unmute and state your name and, and your comment. All right, going once, twice. All right, let the record reflect there was no public comment today. Um, with that, the next meeting of this committee is scheduled for May 16th, 2024 at 11 a.m. back here in this room. Um, seeing no other business before the committee, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? <laughs> is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you, Chris and Tom. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. This meeting is adjourned at 11, uh, 18 a.m. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>